Right, so today's talk is about the Hitchhiker's Guide to the uh, Metaverse. So me and Paul will be, uh, you know, uh, be uh, participating in the presentation, but we have maybe one or two other members who are also in the audience, so you, they can also, you know, if they want to answer some of the questions that you ask, they will probably also participate in the discussion later. Okay, so the actually the title is coming from this book. It came from this book, right? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was a book in 1979. So some of us, maybe you know, most of us are uh, probably not born yet at the time. Uh, but you know, there's a very nice book about you know uh, about you know the the Earth was you know destroyed, and then some of this uh, guy, this guy from Earth, got you know. Uh, saved by some uh, aliens and they were traveling across this you know, galaxy and then a lot of adventures. So basically, the uh, it's, it's an interesting book. So basically, they say that the uh, Earth actually uh, is a computer and who was, uh, you know, doing the calculation and, you know, uh, you know, but it got destroyed before these, uh, the answer is coming up. Okay, so this is just, uh, you know, just, you know, uh, a funny, uh, interesting book. So we got this name from from this book, and then we uh, for this today's presentation. And I hope you know we can you know uh, have a lot of uh, sharing, or you know if you have you know any questions while we giving the presentation, you can just stop uh, me or uh, us, and then you know we, we can also take questions during the presentation. Okay, so let's go uh, to start about this uh, this the trip. So uh, to the metaverse. Right, so uh, as Matt mentioned, we have this survey paper. So it was actually published, uh, putting on archive last month and uh, was pretty less than uh, around one month time. So basically pretty good number of reads already. So I just uh, check it uh, before our talk. So now it's almost 10,000 uh, reads on this uh, research gate. So I've been uh, pretty, uh, uh, you know, uh, popular seems to be and we hope that it's going to be more popular coming up as well and uh, some people also uh, we also uh, receive some comment about some of the writing as well of course and so what the metaverse actually is not new the term as many people may say you know uh, you know is you know this this term is actually from 1962 right so you know about this book uh, snow crash from uh, uh, Neil Stephenson, so was uh, you know some kind of cyberpunk book, uh, fake science fiction uh, at the time, and uh, I have actually read this book like twenty years ago, and so I uh, still remember some of these uh, this uh, you know the storyline over there was not very easy to read at the time, you know, because some of this terminology, a lot of, you know, things at that time was not easy to, to read, but, you know, but now when you got, you know, to the Ready Player One, they actually uh, probably you, you have been more knowledge about, you know, those VR, AR headset that actually, uh, then now, you know, people get a better idea when they uh, read this book, okay? So in this kind of, the, you know, this uh, book, uh, the science fiction schedule, uh, sketch this environment, right? I sketch this virtual environment called Metaverse and in the Metaverse that all individual can uh, use their own uh, avatar, right? So each one have his avatar and avatar, you know, kind of energy to the user's physical cell, right? Then you can do a lot of activity in this, uh, in this Metaverse. So, so basically, you know, uh, at that version of the uh, story, the metaverse is more like a virtual world, you know, or, you know, more kind of virtual reality thing, okay. But then, of course, it got also got involving, so different company coming up and talk about the different definition about the metaverse, uh, Facebook metaverse, meta version, and then, you know, Niantic, the uh, Pokemon Go company, they have their version about the uh, metaverse. They, you know, they call the metaverse to be more about uh, huge augmented reality uh, world rather than you know what Zuckerberg called talk more about the virtual reality world, right? And then of course you know Nvidia, also other you know uh, Facebook. So the, I'm sorry, uh, the Microsoft. So all have their their kind of version of metaverse. So here we try not uh, we're not trying to give a very strict definition of what actually a metaverse should look like, whether it's VR or AR. But we have this kind of concept about you know people 
living with some virtual, you know, they have made every uh, avatar in the virtual world and they live, uh, you know, in the reality, they can also see some virtual uh, entities, you know, in your daily life. Okay. So uh, just so here is this is figure is a picture right? you can show that uh, I call it the cat at the end of the metaverse, basically is also one of the book of the CSI class guide to the galaxy. The second book was about the uh, restaurant at the end of the galaxy. So, but but here the thing is showing that I try to compare with the the uh, uh, before the uh, uh, World Wide Web, right? So or at, at the beginning of World Wide Web. So this is a very uh, uh, you know a popular picture uh, from the newer car. They say you know on the internet nobody knows that you are a dog, right? So just to describe the democratize of the the internet or the World Wide Web. So here we're trying to also show a version of this kind of, you know, we say that in the metaverse, anyone can be a cat because, you know, it's not really that you must, you can be, you, you should be a cat, right? But, you know, you just saying that, you know, you, you can live a different life in the metaverse. You know, you can live a life as a cat or you can live a life as a garbage bag, for example. So, you know, you, you can choose uh, your avatar and then you interact with the, the different entity in the virtual, in the metaverse with the, your avatar. And so then before going more, I talk about the reality and virtual reality continent. So basically this is actually not from, uh, you know, what was from the literature. So, you know, we have this real world and they have a digital world, right? So you can move from the, the physical reality to the, you know, which is totally reality, right? You know, the, our, our, our physical world. And then we have the on the transition is the augmented reality. So basically the you mixing the virtual and the real. And then the the right hand side is the virtual reality. So it's only totally virtual. So you don't see the reality, you only see the virtual object there. Okay. And so I just give make a a, a a job here. So basically, when I'm uh, as I'm uh, on the first slide, like I'm from this uh, computer traditional media and art of the HKST. So basically. I just to show here. So basically, you, we saw in the in the real world that the CMA, the Computational Media and Art, is hiring professor, postdoc, and PhD student. So we are hiring, and on the virtual world, we are also hiring professors and postdoc and PhD student. Okay, and also you know in the AR version, we are also doing the hiring. So you don't see any change, right? But you know in the in the metaverse, uh, you know, the kind of version you may see the uh, different facial change. You know, you can see that at the real tier one, you only see the real tier, virtual AR, you see both the virtual and the, uh, the, 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 the real one. And then the, you know, the, the other end, you only see the, the virtual one. For the metaverse, we also see kind of three phase, but they're not necessarily the same as the AR to VR continuum. But you can see that we, we define something more kind of, you know, you have the digital twins, which is one level and they have the digital native. And then the, uh, the another end is the coexistence of physical and virtual reality, right? So the virtual and the, the physical things, they are coexist. So basically we call it surreality. So you don't know what actually, and you know, you imagine that in the future, you know, it, you may not even be able to tell what is real, what is not unreal. So basically you are, you are living in a world of surreality. Okay, so this is the, uh, the physical virtual uh, uh, coexistence. And okay, so that's it. I assume that there's no uh, no problem here. So I get more details. So how to build, right? So people may ask, okay, you, you've got defined, you know, even Zuckerberg or someone coming up and talk about this metaverse. So how actually, how can we build this metaverse? Or actually you may ask what kind of metaverse you're going to do. Okay, so you see that the basic step, so this is a physical world, right? So it's Hong Kong, you know, of course it's also a picture. It's not really Hong Kong, but you know, a, a picture of Hong Kong, uh, a real picture. So we call this a real uh, physical world. And then we then you have this digital twin. I mentioned about the, the step about, uh, one step is, you know, you build a digital twin of the physical world, right? So then you have something which is a model of the real world in the, uh, in the you know, in the digital uh, world, okay? So you have the digital twin. So you can see that, you know, this building have is a model in this uh, virtual world, right? But it's not necessarily to be a, you know, uh, asset model, right? That, you know, for example, this building is is the uh, 
uh, IFC, you know, International Financial Center. So, but you know, in the digital twin, you only, you will just see a building over there, right? It does not really need to, to have the asset mapping of one floor to another floor, right? Or, or, or the, you know, the concrete to map property or the concrete to, to, to the uh, virtual property. But it have actually have to maintain some of the property that you have, that you want to model to maintain about this uh, physical object. Right. For example, you may want to maintain the model, uh, the property of the height of this building or the, you know, the temperature of this building, for example. So those are, it depends on what kind of thing you want to model, but then you keep a, a twins uh, of this uh, physical world in the uh, digital uh, space, okay? But then the metaverse uh, version is kind of, you, you, you can see from the right side, right? So it's, you know, it's not necessarily, it's more involving from digital twin. So you have a model of the physical world, but then you also have some kind of, you know, different kind of virtual object. And you also have the con some, a lot of the content which are generated probably by artists or by some other users who can generate their own content. They can own their own content. They can, you know, buy and sell the contents on this uh, space. Okay, so the uh, digital twin, uh, the first step, right? So it, uh, uh, as I just introduced that, you know, you have, uh, it is a large scale and high fidelity digital model of an entity, right? Uh, so it does not need to model actually what I mentioned about not and bolt, but you know, uh, it, but it reflects some of the, the physical property, like uh, for example, the object's motion, it, your, your, it, your model is about, uh, either interesting to do the object's motion, right? Or you can keep the property of the temperature or some of the function of the digital model and the entity, okay? And the connection between virtual and the digital twin is uh, tied by the data, okay? So, you know, the, the relationship is about the data. So the data can, can come from the virtual, the physical world to enhance the model in the virtual world, right? And then, you know, you can use the virtual entity to do simulations. Okay, and then the data from the simulation will can be passed back to the physical world to improve the prototyping. So this is actually how how you know the, the digital twin is uh, concept being used in the in in this uh, industry. Okay, and then the content creations, you know, uh, so it's it's not only about the model uh, one to one model, right? But also the we expect that there's content to be created and. Uh, and in order to content creator will be involved. So this uh, content can be uh, represented by the avatars, which, you know, uh, of course the AI can also involve in this content creation. So there we have the creators, okay? We have the content creators. They can be the human creator or the AI creator, because for example, if you want to do a, you know, a real world mapping uh, or if you build some uh, in the virtual world, right? It, it may need a lot of, uh, you know, a manual work. It you just ask artists to create everything, right? So the AI, so, you know, we expect the AI is going to also be responsible for some of this content creation or most of the content creation probably. It, some of this basic infrastructure, they can be just, you know, written by program, okay? Uh, so such digital creation, they can be distinguishable from the physical counterpart, okay? And they can even be uh, only exist in the digital world. So some of the content they are not really, you know, have any mapping to the, to the, to the physical content, okay? Then uh, how to build the, and then the metaverse, right? Uh, you know, we say that, you know, at, that, at, at some point, the metaverse will exist as a self-sustaining, and persistent uh, virtual world. So we, we, we hope, you know, that, or, or maybe, you know, envision that this metaverse can be self-sustaining. So you have to be, uh, be able to, to even function without some humans involvement, you know, which is, you know, uh, the, at the, you know, uh, the later, right? And, the, uh, and then the avatar, the users in the physical world, they can experience some heterogeneous activity in real time, you know? So it's talking about blue time that, you know, uh, real-time experience. And then the theoretically, you know, the metaverse is also able to support unlimited number of concurrent users in a number of virtual world. So this is just theoretically. 
but you know, uh, you know, you, you are computer, you know, you are a computer scientist working on VR and AR. You know that this is extremely difficult. You know, uh, the scalability is always an issue, right? So you really want to scale up this uh, virtual world with uh, even taking. They are not talking about millions or billions of people, right? You want to, you know, scale up a, a, a concert in the virtual world, right? With even thousands of people, you need a lot of computation uh, resources. So it's not easy, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, theoretical, you'd be able to support unlimited number of uh, users. So where are we now? You know, we're talking about so, uh, so advanced things, you know, support unlimited new number of users. So where are we now, right? So here we saw the Metaverse uh, Chronicles. So basically, yeah. any questions? As a comment on top. Yeah. Okay, so I think it, it, someone just uh, forget to mute the mic, but it's fine. And uh, someone is asking questions or something. Uh, yeah, okay, so that, that's, that's uh, continue. If there's no questions, uh, raise up. Okay, so the Metaverse uh, have experienced four transitions. So basically each transition is depending on the technology that the advance in technology as well. So as you can see, on the top of this line, they are the applications of they are the you know uh, uh, of, of contents that are uh, created, and then the things under uh, under this line they are the technology which become a bit, uh, the emerge which emerge at the time. Okay, so we can see that it coming from the test based interactive game. So basically. Uh, of course, it coming first. This kind of concept appear first in the literature, right? In the in the science fictions, which are you know similar concept they appear in 1974, for example. Of course, it can be even earlier, but you know we just list some of these that we have uh, there. Okay, and then they have this test based interactive game when the com personal computer become available and the computer graphic also uh, getting. Uh, better and better from the 80 around around the you know the late 80s and a beginning of 90 and then the uh, you know snow crash come in 1992 and then can, you we, have, can we can we you, can you reshare your screen please because that went away uh, i'm a screen is uh, stop sharing okay yes. sorry uh, thank you okay let me try to um, okay is it? Yes. Sure okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Much. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. I apologize. I don't know why it suddenly uh, dropped. Yes. <laughs> okay. So now I hope you can see it now. And so we are talking about this, uh, this, this, this technology on you know below this line, and also the, the application or content which are uh, created based on this technology, right? And we talked about at the beginning of this uh, test-based interactive game because the personal computer and some of this computer graphic become, uh, you know, available. And then from the, you know, mid nineties uh, until the uh, early 2010 uh, at the time, right? That the uh, virtual world and massive multiplayer online game also get you know, popular. So we have the Second Life and Minecraft. So which are one step of is transition of the metaverse as well. And then after the uh, you know when the AR and we you know at the 2011, so the cryptocurrency blockchain you know become available. This technology become available. And then late a little bit later, after a couple of years, that uh, Google have released their Google Glass and the you know the VR headset, Oculus, etc. Also get uh, you know massively manufactured. Then we have more kind of immersive virtual environment on smart mobile and available. So this Pokemon Go and VR chat. Super Mario AR, etc. So it's another uh, uh, phase of this transition. And then, you know, after 797, you know, 17, right? And then now, so more people call this year is the uh, the first year of this, uh, this metaverse. So then actually, uh, you know, you see that they're also happening on the application, the crypto kitties, and then some of this NFT project and, uh, you know, 
uh, available there. So you can kind of roughly see how actually the things get involved uh, from 70s to now, okay? So obviously we say technology serve as the catalyst to drive such a transition, right? So you can see that all the transition were because of the, some technology get become available, right? Then, uh, but nowadays we say the research committee is still on the way to explore the metaverse development, right? So ideally new technology could potentially unlock some of these additional features that we, actually we are going to describe more uh, today. So this is another, uh, uh, graph that we created. So basically it kind of give you some more uh, idea about what is the uh, uh, metaverse, uh, you know, space that we can work on. So you can see that it's a, it's a little bit complicated uh, uh, figure. So you can see that we have this Y is S axis and the Y axis. So the S axis show you the richness of the content. For example, the, you, you know, it come from text as we described from the colonical thing, right? You have text and image, audio, video, gaming, virtual, CD and VR, mixed reality, AI and physical world, right? So these are the, uh, the things on the, on the, on the, the, the S axis. So you saw the richness of the content. And then the Y axis is so you use some more uh, personalization, okay? That about the experience. So some text or, you know, for example, uh, here I said, we say uh, read and write. So it means that, you know, you just read the message, you write the message. So, you know, each message give, does not give you a special experience, you know, just a message, right? So it's just like a basic transience uh, execution. And then you get, you're going up the, the wisest, you get more personalized. So, you know, for example, the Sengas, May two, Spotify, Netflix, I like do a, you know, you, you move across these as, as is, you know, it give you more richness in the content. And then, uh, but here it, it give you more uh, personalized experience, right? You can see that the Fortnite give you a better personalized experience than the SimCity because for example, the Fortnite, you can choose your avatars, uh, the features of your avatar, right? And then, you know, and then you go even go up, right? You have even more, you can even got involved in the content creation. So you are creators. And then a creator will also work together to form a committee, right? So for example, that the, you have this, uh, this line of YouTube, right? And then go YouTube, uh, go about YouTube is the TikTok. For example, TikTok have better, enable better function about uh, the social committee, okay? And then this empty face actually, we, uh, we, we have this vision, uh, ambition that the AR, uh, sorry, the, uh, the metaverse research can work on, okay? So it have, it's going to have some more, uh, you know, uh, feature, right? The, uh, you know, uh, for example, perpetual, that the content created that by the artists, they can permanently stay in the virtual space, for example, okay? And the, uh, the dirty thing is, you know, you, you can also have some more, uh, you, you know, you have the uh, property of, you know, this uh, virtual and also uh, reality things uh, with interact together. Okay, then, uh, so in terms of technology, so I have, uh, we have any question on the chat? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, then. Uh, I, I do think you're fine. So basically, uh, we take questions at the end, if they, uh, but people can actually post their questions in the chat. And if people have questions, I will, I will alert you, okay? Sure, sure, thanks. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so anyway, I, I only have like around 10 more minutes. Uh, so actually I have 160 slides and, uh, <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to finish them. I, I just going to uh, show you some of these uh, highlights. Okay, so this actually the, uh, the pillars. So uh, how to build the metaverse and uh, you know, you have to be rely on technology, of course, right? So I saw you the uh, egg type of technology. They are uh, the, the technology enabler for the metaverse uh, uh, work. And then also on top of the metaverse that if the technology become available, you also need something, some technology, not hard technology, but some kind of, you know, te te technological thing which to enable the metaverse ecosystem. Okay, so the lower side, right, that we can see that they have this network. So basically the edge cloud, AI, computer vision, some bot technology for, for example, for the ownership and robotic and uh, IoT. 
And then, you know, this very important thing uh, here is about the uh, user interactivity and uh, also the extended reality. And uh, so you can see that the, 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 the items below uh, on each pillar, actually they are the future research uh, agenda that you can uh, work on. But I just saw you here, it actually, we, I also saw it in the last slide, so uh, as the future work. So these things, these things are the, the things they haven't done or not fully done yet, but it, we need, it, need them to enable these, uh, you know, enable the technology. Which for example, the, uh, for example, the network part, right? So we need sub millisecond latency, you know, because the network latency, you know, give you different experience, right? So in order to support a, a real metaverse uh, with a good experience, you need the network latency, you need the network, you need to bring in the, bring down the latency to sub milliseconds, okay? So millisecond is like, a, one second is like 1000 milliseconds. Okay, so you will be able to bring down that level then you can have some tactile feeling. You know, if, if you touch something, touch someone, then, you know, it, you know uh, it, and someone to receive the, your touch, then you need, uh, you know, these latencies to be around uh, one or a few, or may, maybe one or two milliseconds or lower. Okay, otherwise you, you don't have this kind of experience. And then on the top right, then there's this ecosystem like avatar technology that how you create the avatar and also the content creation. There's something to do with the, you guys, the artists, how you create this, uh, uh, how you use the technology to create your content, right? Then the virtual economic, how you buy and share uh, and how this uh, transaction can be done with the, some kind of uh, decentralized financial, uh, you know, diff, uh, financial system. And then the, the some social uh, acceptability, you know, what even what type of avatar will be acceptable by the people, right? And then the security issues and the trust uh, accountability. Okay, so these are the uh, vision, uh, you know, and I, I put it more into kind of, you know, protocol step as uh, I, I, you know, these uh, computer science people would like to draw things as a, as a step. They're not necessarily to be, uh, you know, in reality, they may not be really on top of each other, but, you know, we like to draw them in, in, in this way. So you can see that the uh, metaverse is here and then the metaverse system or ecosystem is on top of this. And then the technology and are lying uh, below, right? So you can see, I just put this pillar over there. And here you can see that the, uh, this, I saw you this, the uh, user, the user interactivity and extended reality, they are directly beneath uh, the uh, metaverse, okay? And then uh, which are, we call them the entry technology, the technology that allow you to enter or, you know, got access to the metaverse, okay? So you access the metaverse with the extended reality or virtual reality, you know, this uh, technology, right? To enable you to access to the, the metaverse, but then you also need to use the, uh, to support the user interactivity, how you be able to interact with or manipulate the virtual object. So those are more uh, high level things compared with the computer vision, AI and uh, robotic things or even edge network, which are even lower, right? And then, yeah, so then these, uh, these things are providing this support. And then the edge and uh, cloud actually, because we need to bring the latency to you know, some very uh, low latency uh, level so we can uh, get better user experience. Okay, but then this uh, all everything together is going to provide the, uh, the, the the technology support which needed for this uh, for the metaverse. And then even you have the metaverse, you know, want to make the system running running uh, not as bad as what Facebook having now. Then you need much more uh, you know focus on those uh, things. It's soft. It's not as hard as the underlying technology, but they, they are essential. For example, the, the, all these things that I mentioned about these, you know, uh, the, uh, the avatar, the, you know, uh, okay, and the, uh, anyway, the social acceptability things. Okay, so then I'm not going so much into this. I only have like five, seven minutes. So I'm going to show you some more, uh, you know, videos or demo stuff that are, are you know, uh, that probably more interesting. Okay, so uh, 
so I'll cover the next five minutes about this, uh, uh, some other, you know, some work we have done in our lab or some of these things that will be uh, become uh, uh, important. So actually I already saw this one about this uh, CMA, uh, you know, uh, recruitment thing. But then, you know, the virtual, so basically, you know, you, you, are, you can see that the reality, again, the reality, the virtual reality, the max reality or AR or, you know, augmented reality. Then the thing is that the, uh, the uh, you know, for the VR, right, basically uh, you wear a headset and you just, you know, see the virtual thing, virtual world. And as artists, you can also, you can do a lot of, you know, VR painting, right? You can just, uh, the technology is pretty nice now. You can do the your VR painting and the uh, the, the painting you created will be actually uh, stored in this uh, VR space, okay? And then you can, you know, do a lot of multi-user uh, interaction as well. You can allow multiple artists to do the painting together, right? For example, you can see here that they can uh, share the sense of the space and share sense of presence. And then you, they can communicate in this uh, virtual environment with the, you know, with the get gesture, text, voice, et cetera, et cetera. And then the AR, right? So the AR, I guess many of you have played this uh, Pokemon Go. So Pokemon Go is kind of, you know, uh, quite most popular AR application, right? That, uh, that mo many people have used. But actually according to the, the, the strict definition, uh, Pokemon Go is not AR. Right. Because if you want to fulfill uh, uh, an application to call it to be a uh, augmented reality, you have to fulfill three criteria. First, you have to to combine the virtual world and the, uh, the 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 you know the virtual world and the physical world. That that is okay because you you, you can see that you have the virtual uh, uh, Pokemon and then the physical environment. Right. The second point is about interaction with, in, with the real time. So the, the real time is a very important uh, concept for AR. You, you know, you, you cannot give a real time performance that nobody is going to use. And what real time means? Real time means that uh, you need to support at least thirty frame per, uh, per second. So you know, as a you know, playing the video, right? So you have the number of frames. So you'd be able to support uh, at least thirty uh, frame processing per, per you know per, per second. And they also have to register in three dimensional world, right? So you can see that, uh, uh, you know, because we are in the three dimensional world. So, so this virtual object have to present to you, which, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, fulfill this uh, 3D, uh, con you, know, uh, you know, requirement, right? But the Pokemon Go, you can see that this, uh, this uh, Pokemon actually, they can be sewing on top of the tree, et cetera, et cetera. So it does not really uh, fulfill this. But of course we, we say that it is uh, AR, so it's very good for us to also to uh, pitching to people. Okay, but then there are a lot of, uh, you know, even AR, right? So there's a lot of things have to support. For example, you need to have the support about, you know, uh, interactions and also have a support, you know, uh, a significant effort for the uh, distancing and checking. And then mixed reality. So some of you may ask what is different between mixed reality and augmented reality, right? That or you know, virtual reality, VR and AR is very easy to, to think. So what is a mixed reality? So mixed reality basically, you know, you mix things, but for example, uh, it's not only presenting you the virtual content, you know, but you'll be able to use a physical. So for example, you can see here, right, that you have a uh, physical screwdriver, and then you have also you are sewing also uh, a virtual uh, you know school in this uh, virtual world, right? So then you actually you can use your physical driver to to you know to uh, to operate on this uh, the the school actually in the virtual world, right? So it's kind of you know uh, kind of makes thing you use the virtual the physical thing to control the virtual stuff, and then you can also you know uh, sew you to. Uh, map, you know, overlay them to this uh, physical space. Uh, okay, so I think uh, I don't have too much time. So let me show you the, uh, uh, some of this. Uh, so I mentioned that this, uh, actually, yeah, let me show again. Uh, okay, just give me another five minutes and I will be done. Yes. So. There is um, also the opportunity that, as you have 160 slides, which I assume you you know everything about, uh, if there's questions where the answer sort of like you know, 
bring yeah. slides to mind, you can show them too. But like, yeah, you can of course have another five minutes. Sure, sure, that definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, so I just picked this, put the slide when they have when we have some discussion late, later, right? So you can see that actually the uh, I mentioned that the interaction is very important because you know when you wear a, a, a headset like this, right? And then the virtual content are so in, in front of you, right? So how are you going to interact with the virtual object? Even the very simple questions, how are you going to enter tests in, when you are in the VR space? How you type, right? So in the physical world, we have the keyboard, okay? So how do you actually uh, really even doing the typing for test entry in the virtual environment, right? So this is actually uh, not easy. So, uh, they, you know, of course, the most uh, uh, natural way for humans to use the hand, right? So then you need to, to do hand gesture uh, recognition. You need to be able to recognize the gesture, the users, and how they interact with the virtual content. Okay, so there's a uh, this is not very easy thing. So they have people have uh, putting a lot of effort, you know, to do test entry using, you know, just and their your your hand, and then some of the test entry with uh, you know your with some device. So basically this was also uh, my former student. And then, you know, you used, you know, different kind of, you know, thing like, uh, you know, embodiment into essence, you know, use your body and then maybe you use some of these uh, different kind of sensor that you can, you can use. So this is actually a, a video I show you that for, I mentioned that when you wear a, 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 a headset, right? And you want to do a typing. So you may say, okay, just show me a virtual keyboard. Okay, I saw me the virtual keyboard in the AR uh, uh, headset. But then the problem is that if I give you a virtual keyboard, the virtual keyboard is going to, uh, you know, cover half of your view, your field of view, right? So you don't, you, you're going to, you're not going to see other things because the keyboard can be very big, right? So then actually we, in this world, we invented this, uh, this, uh, this keyboard uh, enters for the VR. So you can see that, uh, this video is showing you that we don't have a keyboard, but the user be able to type. Uh, so he want to type research, okay? So basically you, 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 you put this line as uh, you put the 24 character as an imaginary line. And then when you move your hand to some location actually corresponding to some uh, a few number of uh, character, right? And then you, you know, you, we, we say that you, you are the song, the selection song, right? And then selection will tell you, allow you to further select, uh, you know, each character. And then you'll be able to do the typing in the mid air without uh, a keyboard, but you can just type it uh, with uh, your hand, okay? So it's kind of, uh, 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 a, a nice way of actually allow you to see the uh, the environment and also allow you to to type. Okay, so then uh, those also some gadget was invented, uh, which you know with uh, some different kind of uh, different kind of level because this sensor can uh, give you a different input based on your force. So in some some force uh, entry, right? So uh, for example, we use the one hand or actually to control the the John's movement. So basically just demonstrate the concept, right? So depending on what kind of, how, how big the force you uh, you give it to this, uh, this ring, you know, it's supposed to be a ring, a lot of the ring that you can control your things. And then you can uh, allow you to, uh, to use, uh, even to control the rotate just with uh, two fingers. And this is a, a demo uh, again. So you can allow, you can see that the, the student is uh, here actually wearing a, a, a dual glass. And what you what he's showing about you is to you is about, you know, this is his field of view, what he's seeing. Uh, he is moving, uh, you know, a file from one computer and then just drop it to another computer, okay? So basically it's all this kind of uh, hand gesture detection and hand gesture checking. So it allow you to actually use your hand to operate on, on, on the file, right? So this, uh, another student, she's moving a file uh, from a computer, right? And, and she actually drives it to a projector, okay? So uh, it's a bit slow because, you know, a lot of uh, computation uh, requirement is needed. So then actually it, it, it got, uh, it dropped and, and, and display over there, okay? So I think I will, I can kind of uh, stop here and, and I, I take some questions and then we can, uh, if there's any question which is related to uh, the other latest slide that we're going to show them.
Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you. This was a, a great first pitch. And uh, so there's already one hand up. So there's two uh, ways of how to participate in the discussion. One is just raise your hand and then I will try to keep track who's first. Um, and you can also in the chat, you don't need to type your entire question, just like say, I have a question or something like that, um, which is an alternative. Um, so Mila Oiva, who is a senior fellow at the Kudan Research Lab, has a question. Okay, please, yeah. You, you have to unmute yourself, I think. That's true. It's on the left uh, corner, left, uh, yeah. Ah, okay, I, I know why it doesn't work. Okay, good. Um, now, Mila, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, now I can do it. Thank you. Yeah, there was something <laughs> going on. Yeah, thank you. Really rich, uh, really interesting presentation. And um, I'm um, I'm a cultural historian, so I'm coming from a little bit like different angle and and looking at this. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm I'm really interested in developments of technology and how kind of like technologies have been in enabling us to uh, like as, as humans to, to communicate starting from I have been studying like the 19th century and and now it's really interesting to hear how you see kind of like uh, future potentials of, of all this so um, but I, I you mentioned that um, that uh, well, you briefly talked about like this uh, sustainability and persistence and the possibilities to maintain all these things. So I, I, I just wanted to, if you could elaborate more, how uh, you think that kind of like sustainable, how all these uh, kind of like metaverse could be sustained? Because of course, now if you look at like, um, websites from the 1990s or if you would like to be, play uh, kind of like a like computer game or video game from from even early 2000s there is a problem of uh, obsolete technology so you 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 might not be able to do that because the technology has has you know developed and so on so uh, I, I'm just kind of like curious to know kind of like how you think that this um, like metaverse could be sustained uh, so that it could be somehow, um, you know, accessible for a longer time period. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For, yeah, it's very good questions. Actually, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to, 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 to keep them for a long time. Uh, the, uh, the reason is that uh, so, you know, according to some study, they say by 2050, all our storage of the data uh, is going to use half of the energy on the earth. So uh, actually it's uh, very difficult to, to keep everything uh, forever. And so, uh, yeah, because all these things, uh, you, you know, all these storage, uh, silicones and et cetera, et cetera, they take up a lot of energy. And of course, you know, uh, the answer is that we hope there will be more advanced in uh, storage technology, which you know, be a more energy efficient and be able to store more data, uh, you know, onto those uh, things, right? Which can be, you know, uh, there's something uh, people are saying that the, uh, for example, the some uh, some uh, technology from the biology, for example, the DNA, be able to store a lot of data compared to maybe, you know, these uh, just zero and one, zero and one kind of uh, uh, thing. But th those uh, are, are more kind of, you know, I'm trying to talk more kind of uh, technological thing, right? But I think you are more uh, answer, ask the question from the, uh, you know, more humanity or historian point of view that, uh, that how actually these data can be, uh, uh, of course, you know, you, you, you people generate uh, a lot of content these days, that's right, right? That we are content, we have a lot of content are generated and, you know, they even, you know, put it on YouTube and, uh, 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 you know, a lot of, uh, so then uh, they, they're, they're maintained over there. But I, so I, I think we don't have a very good answer to how we're going to, uh, to, to deal with this, but I think it's a very good research, uh, topic for like, uh, you know, uh, a researcher like you that, you know, 
uh, talking about, you know, because we with the, all this technology that enable each user to create their content, right? And maybe not some of the content are just uh, not very useful or they just, they are transient, right? They, they're just like, uh, like some transaction record, record, they may not want to store them, but then there will be some kind of more important content that uh, actually our paper uh, proposed, like Paul had been uh, written something that, you know, that someone have to build some museum, for example, you build a museum for, the digital art, for example, this is one way to, uh, to, to, to store the content. And maybe we are someone who is uh, now, like the role is a librarian or like a uh, museum uh, person who will be able to, to uh, be a profession and who is going to, uh, to deal with this, uh, you know, interesting and protesting the content. But maybe I can see that Paul have some, uh, some uh, turn on his mind, he also want to say something else. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your questions. Uh, and in our like uh, in our paper, we have a session uh, called content uh, creations. And in there, we mentioned that uh, we need to have tools to create a lot of contents. And based on this, we expect that uh, the content will be like uh, information overflow. So we can see that the old content maybe replaced by the new content. And your guess is uh, very correct. And we totally agree with that. So that's why we need to have a like museum or we need to have some decision rules and to store and make a like an archive of the, of the contents created in the metaverse. And also we need to deal with like the cost generations, maybe like, uh, 30 years ago, I played Game Boy, and nowadays we play uh, like, uh, sorry, I, I, I don't play, I, I only do research these days. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, maybe we have the, like, oh, okay, I know what it is. Um, PS5, PlayStation 5, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, based on this, we know that the, 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 when the metaverse evolve, we will have the new things. We need to decide what to keep and what to be. Uh, um, yeah, we, we need to be for, have the ability to be forgotten about the old things. But at, meanwhile, we need to keep the forgotten things. If someone want to have um, uh, like uh, have a history of the metaverse, because we expect that the metaverse with a lot of people, participants, uh, it will be a society. We cannot just like the current game, uh, just remove the thing, remove the things, and then uh, it, it is not the end of the story. We, we need to have a way to preserve the contents. Mm. Maybe this will become a collective memories for everyone. So, Maybe you can extend a little bit on, uh, on this. Like, how, how is this time, like, how is the metaverse different from Second Life? Because all these arguments have been made with Second Life already, right? Yeah, uh, for the metaverse, uh, the big difference is, uh, as Professor Ho just mentioned uh, in his talk, uh, we experienced the three stages of transition, right? We mm -hmm. have the first stage of digital chains. That means we have a copy of the physical world. And according to this, uh, we start have a lot of people participate in this virtual world. And we call this as the second stage of digital native. Mm -hmm. And based on this digital native, we can understand that we have a lot of activities. We build a lot of new things. Maybe we build a lot of virtual buildings in this endless a uh, very huge world that some objects uh, never exist in the real world. Maybe we have a lot of uh, uh, big buildings or maybe we can uh, have the buildings uh, didn't consider the um, physics, uh, principle, uh, like, like the physics principle, like the uh, Newton first law or second law. I don't know, I am not a physics. Uh, researchers. Uh, so based on this, we expect that maybe after some years, 
the digital natives can make the virtual world become a totally different world. Mm -hmm. And we expect that, but they may interoperate with each other. And some virtual objects may appear in the real world. So we expect the middle of the coexistence of physical virtual realities. And this is the very uh, big difference. For Second Life, we can see all the people uh, will work or play in a, uh, in a virtual environment. But in the metaverse, we can see the digital trends and the properties that uh, people may work or play uh, in both well, and they can interact with each other. I mean, the two worlds can interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. There's another question by Indrik Ibrus, who is also faculty at Tallinn University and a member of Kudan. Yeah, please, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, with the question. Yeah. Hello. Hello uh, from the Estonian uh, forest. Yeah. I've been walking my dog and listening to you. Yeah, in the forest. Uh, the forest. <laughs> no, this is too real here. Um, okay. But um, I have a question. So, um, you have been talking us, telling us a lot about the form, effectively. So, they we are and they are and so on. Uh, but I wonder, I wonder, um, so for me as a media and communications and generally social science scholar, uh, the big issue or the pot potential of the metaverse is relates to, or metaverse effectively is a kind of parallel term to what we also know as the Web3, so the new form of new era of the internet. So the Web2.0 was everything about that, or at least brought along phenomena that we know as platformization and datafication. So effectively a monopolization or control of the internet by the very big platforms, mm -hmm. which brought along that much of the value created by most actors in the economy were kind of extracted or owned or controlled uh, by those seminar players, the platforms. So now the promise of the Web3 slash metaverse is that, um, is that it, could, it could enable effectively more uh, fair redistribution of wealth in the sense that people get the, these platforms they are all ecosystems, they are not because of the blockchain based architecture, they don't necessarily need to be owned by some of the central players, but effectively can facilitate decentralization of communication platforms, uh, communication practices of ownership in the, of, of uh, digital assets and so on. So, and of course, there are counter arguments to do this because if we see how many of the metaverse environments are built right now, there's already a lot of speculation. So metaverse can end up in what we know in real economy, the financialization. So most of the attention goes on, the focus goes on, on speculation with assets and not so much of creation, of, of new value creation, uh, real labor being rewarded uh, fairly. So my, my question is something like, how much is this an issue to computer scientists? Or uh, do you also address these aspects, or how do you address these aspects in in Korea in your university? Ah, oh, it's the question for you. It's about a Korean university. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, so if I understand correctly, your question is about uh, I I I heard several questions, right? Uh, maybe the metaverse will be owned by uh, just one company or multiple companies, right? And uh, not even companies. I mean, imagine metaverse as a, as a, as we, as the email. It's being a protocol mm. that is not owned by anybody. So and yeah. of, and it enables co-creation. So the whole uh, kind of metaverse as an economy is being effectively a market that is builds itself via transactions or co-ownership or uh, etc. So this is the true potential. What but. Uh, makes metaverse or web web three exciting to many mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, of course the opposite scenario is being still dominated as web 2.0 was by some of the few companies that of course this this is what they don't know and we need to probably regulate against and fight against and all that so i just wonder how do you think about these things 
Right. So the question, I think, uh, maybe I. Uh, so the question is that, uh, uh, I, 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 from my understanding, that is the uh, metaverse is seems to be able to enable some kind of new uh, economics uh, for people, uh, which is decentralized. And then there's also another question is that maybe uh, you get also more 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 control. Uh, Right. Yeah, yeah. So if one could uh, rephrase it, maybe, um, you know, on one hand, there was the original sort of utopia of the of the World Wide Web, right, where yeah, uh, yeah. everybody can build websites, everybody has email, but there is no central control. Right. Now, in this particular uh, circumstance, um, it seems like blockchain technology, because we can have peer to peer contracts, uh, mm -hmm. 5G communication, which is not centralized, but, but decentralized, would allow for sort of like a kind of, um, you know, sort of more distributed um, way of working. And that means you, you don't have to, like, if you want to do a video, you don't go through YouTube, for example. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the key question is, um, regarding this, um, the um, do, do you, as a computer scientist slash developer um, slash researcher in this decidedly 3D augmented twin reality kind of uh, business, think about exactly this problem, which obviously uh, the conception of Indrik Ibrus uh, regarding the metaverse is, is a notion shared by other people, of course, uh, where, where it's more than just a 3D world in essence. So there, there's, right? So, so the question is, is, is that something that is discussed as you're, as you're working? Mm. Or are okay. we just talking about a shared 3D protocol that is like the basis for other companies again? Yeah, um, maybe uh, actually we try to uh, ex have a very brief overview uh, of the economic activities uh, mm -hmm. in our survey. Uh, to be honest, our team uh, just try to cover uh, these aspects, mm -hmm. but uh, we have several congestions uh, based on the current situations uh, of the related technologies. For example, uh, recent days we have the NFT as which is, uh, and we leverage the like, NFT to sell some uh, co new contents, maybe some artwork. And one of my friends uh, he sell their artwork, uh, actually it's a, it's a toy. And then they say that they put that, put it with the, uh, on, on the NFT marketplace, and then they can sell it quickly. So actually we can see that even uh, like uh, a content creator um, in this, in, in, in this uh, at the time being of these metaverse, uh, although this metaverse, have, I mean, is not that fancy as, as stated in our paper. Yeah, so we, we, we can see that the people uh, can do their own selling so they can maximize their own benefits. I mean, they can earn as much as they can because we, we try to remove the, um, uh, the middleman between the selling, uh, between, uh, between the seller and the buyer. So we can see such a benefit there. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, but I think uh, his question, I think is more related to, uh, yeah, this is one aspect, right? Another aspect that I, I from what I heard is, is that, uh, mm. The uh, so uh, people talking about using the metaverse, you know, it's going to be a more advanced uh, future, like a big thing, like the internet, right? The internet is mm. not is a decentralized system. Is everybody can make their website, and you're not, uh, you know, uh, uh, controlled by only uh, some big payer, right? That you know that uh, that you can always make your own page, web page. Uh, but mm. then the other hand that you know from now uh this uh, development of metaverse seems to be a uh, you know uh you know there are some big players like uh, facebook and maybe you know so they may just develop them they are they are they are uh, 
the version of the metaverse, right? So maybe you, uh, if you want to build something, you need to use Facebook, uh, the metaverse created by these uh, Facebook. Uh, so more, I think it's more uh, this kind of interoperability issue. So even actually at the, at the beginning of the internet, right? Although it's kind of today you can create a website, but at the beginning was also, uh, you know, uh, the first one was kind of, you know, uh, by the uh, U.S. defense, right, the DARPA. So DARPA created the internet and then the, uh, the, in the network is created, but then people, uh, and then there's, uh, you know, uh, the Bernard Lee, right? Uh, he was in the CERN and then he find a way that, you know, maybe they, that nobody is going to use, the, is using the internet, you know, at the time the network, right? So then he come up with this, this World Wide Web concept that you can use, uh, the uh, the World Wide Web to share some of this content, this data that he uh, you know created from this uh, this nuclear uh, you know this uh, atomic uh, experiment. And but you know what was the time was also by uh, some of these uh, field players. But then actually for I E you know uh, you know Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineer, so I E and then ACM. So for computer scientists, we have two major to big uh, institute, you know, the uh, ACM is uh, Association for Computing and Machinery, and then the IEEE. So both actually they have some kind of, you know, uh, and then also some ITF, like IETF, those uh, standardization bodies. So I think in order to, you know, uh, make those, you know, even, you know, different company development their own uh, metaverse thing, uh, technology, right? There will be some process that, you know, it will be able to make sure that your, your you know, that there has some interoperability of the standards or protocols. So they, uh, they you know, this, I think at some point, the, uh, actually, the, I think there already some, uh, committee at the IEEE, they are working on some standardization of the uh, metaverse protocol. Mm -hmm. So then when these people are using, they're coming from the industry, for example, uh, the 5G, right? The 5G also have the standard which coming, you know, Huawei, uh, you know, uh, uh, those telecom or this company, they're, they're part of it, right? So when, when people see money there, when these companies see there's money, there will be a standardization committee will be formed and then they are, they are doing the uh, standardize these things to make sure that everybody will make money. Yeah. So th that, that I think was the center of the question uh, in the end. Um, is this enough, right? Like we have the W3C that does HTTP, HTML, like all these standards. Uh, nevertheless, Facebook has sort of hijacked the system um, right, and now there's websites that you can only access if you're in Facebook, sort of. And so, so the interesting thing is, is the metaverse that, it's like, if you follow Indrik's uh, sort of vision, there is the chance now to sort of have another go on, like, making it uh, sort of a shared resource, while that is for the citizens of the metaverse and the planet. While the other option is obviously there is um, again a winner takes all situation where very few people make a lot of money in essence. Um, there is one next question, which is uh, Jan Asachi, who is one of our PhD students. Okay, yeah, yeah, maybe Hi. we Thank can you. also Jan's question. Yeah. Um, also connected with the Indrex uh, question, is it kind of sparked uh, the memory? Uh, and the knowledge. Not everyone knows that Vitalik Buterin, who is the uh, developer of Ethereum, actually got his idea from World of Warcraft when his class and his items were changed in the patch. And they're allowed, they stopped the Blizzard, the, the company, kind of destroyed the experience of playing the game for him. And he asked the question, can I have an in-game item that no um, central authority can change? Mm -hmm. And now you can see it. Now you totally can see the NFTs, the, the blockchain technology allows you to have something that is your own. There is no, uh, there is no authority that can change it because it's decentralized and it's encrypted. And then the question is basically, can, can we have metaverse before we have total adoption of the NFTs and the blockchain technology? 
And this kind of leads to the question, for whom the metaverse we are building right now? It's, it seems like, well, it's, we, we used to say, okay, the internet is you know, free for everyone. Everyone yeah. can create a website. Well, my mom can't create a website. Mm -hmm. There is a possibility to create a website, but she can't do that, right? And then there yeah. are authorities who block the Telegram channels, they block the AP addresses, they block the alternative media or some resources. So that gives the internet a shape of um, geographical maps. It gives the shape of geopolitical maps. It gives the shape of income. And there is a pure evidence of centralization of the internet. Who gets the, who sits closer to the router gets the, the power of what is there, right? Yeah. So how do we build a metaverse? The one day I log in and I still have my clothes on and I still have my name in there. Yeah. I think this is a yeah. good question, but you know, uh, also difficult questions, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, it's very good to discuss because you know, uh, I think your, your group is very in, have a very interesting background because you have uh, so for our you know when we talk about the computer scientists, you know, we are more they you know every time we give you know give some talk, they're talking about you know technology, you know, how can you guarantee that the uh, latency is below uh, five millisecond right but now we've got some more interesting uh, thing about you know uh, uh, about this how, how to do this uh, this uh, governance and also uh, yeah yeah um, maybe I try to explain your answer uh, yeah. uh, sorry your questions uh, with uh, from a technology point of view okay yeah so um, for example, uh, I see a paper saying that uh, we, for example, in AR, there is, a, there is a proposal that you can put your memories. Uh, when you wear the smart glasses, uh, you, there is a camera, then the camera capture every frames of your everyday life. And then this frame will be stored in a, like a decentralized uh, data structure like blockchain. And when the blockchain has been, uh, at the, I mean, the record has been modified or manipulated by the others, and there is a method to um, detect such change. And this uh, has been proposed in uh, 2019 in uh, IEEE Percom, so, uh, which is the best paper of the year. And then uh, based on this, we may know actually if your identity has been changed or even removed it. Such decentralized um, data so storage may help. Uh, this is just a technology solutions. But if we need to solve the problem in the real world, I think we need to consider more. So this is a very good question. But uh, yeah, I, I just also just uh, something to add, right? So I think uh, Yana is, uh, you know, he asking about this, uh, he asked about this, uh, this concept about this ownership, right? That who actually own these uh, things in this uh, metaverse or in the, even today, who own the things on the internet, right? So, uh, you know, you can always, your operator, for example, in some, uh, you know, the operator or even Google can always, you know, uh, Google say that they have received a lot of requests, you know, every year from the government to remove some context, right? So, it's just, so, uh, so actually it's, it's more, not only about technical issue, right? So who own this, but then the, uh, of course you, uh, you mentioned about this blockchain technology or NFT, but the blockchain and NFT technology are pretty simple, right? So they are, they are very standard uh, things that, uh, you know, if you're using, uh, 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 you know, NFT basically just using Ethereum's uh, uh, blockchain. The only, I think, you know, you can just deploy this uh, blockchain technology in the metaverse, you know, right in ministry. But then the, of course, there are also some people are uh, talking about the greenness of this uh, technology as well, right? That, you know, is uh, this blockchain mining technology actually is going to actually uh, consume a lot of powers and uh, energy there. 
but uh, I, I, yeah, but I think this uh, technology of NFT is uh, or blockchain is, you know, you can give you uh, that you mentioned that no one can break them yet. Right? But I think soon when the quantum computing is, uh, you know, maybe in 10 years, there will be a quantum computers. Then all these uh, cryptography will be just, you know, like uh, easily uh, break, uh, you know, with uh, these, uh, a few milliseconds or seconds that will be break. But I think even before that, right, that I, this, uh, this kind of blockchain technology is, uh, is pretty ready. It's pretty uh, standard things that uh, maybe uh, Carlos, you have, uh, so Carlos is actually our uh, doing research on this uh, govern, uh, governance and uh, privacy security aspect. So I just see maybe whether Carlos, you have anything to uh, add or, or, or about this. This aspect uh, about I can try to previous two questions are very like yes. English yeah. question and also Yana's question they are quite related uh, thing yeah uh, yes hi everyone uh, thanks for the time and uh, yeah it is a very interesting question and uh, also very challenging solution I mean uh, what you want I mean the idea of the metaverse as far as we know is like a still uh, progress that will last or will take many many years. So one of the main differences and the metaverse is, like, as you mentioned, the geopolitical differences that uh, at, there are leading the internet or how they govern on the internet is something we know that the metaverse can face. When they create the internet, they were not thinking about all these uh, political issues or the, who is going to govern the internet because the idea of the internet was a distributed system. And what is happen is like a regulation happen and then you have a limitation in terms of data on how the data is here. Like for example, the GDPR is limiting all these things nowadays. So one solution, I mean, the best, the good part is like we know this can happen so the metaverse can face them in advance before the metaverse is a reality. Then regarding the uniqueness or like the like who is uh, the ownership is like, as you mentioned, like a blockchain is a very good technology for that. And, uh, and we are facing, uh, we are seeing the evolution of blockchain and how these technologies are evolving, for example, in online games. Now you can earn money when you play, you can sell your evolute, uh, evolve uh, items you have. Uh, you, you play, you gain money when you play. That's an example of uh, several games that are happening nowadays. So these things will also change how the economic, in the previous question they were asking about uh, how the economic will work in the metaverse. And Regarding the governance is something like there are like, uh, there were attempts in online games and uh, how to govern all these situations. Like for example, who is gonna own the metaverse? Uh, that's something is to be discussed. Uh, there are companies, uh, regulation, standardization. We have the time to put all these things together, like regulation, regulators, uh, governments like physical government, real governments from countries, how they can merge the talk and make the, the metaverse a better reality that the internet is nowadays. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I also have a question which is directly related to this, but uh, let's first take Mar. Mar Kanet, who is at uh, the University of Panhui for a year. Yeah, also yeah, part yeah. Of our team. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, first, uh, th thank you for, for accepting the invitation for with short notice. Uh, we really appreciate. Um, you, you touch really nice topics in general. I think there is a lot of open questions. I think for, for me, one, one open question is about actually what Mila was in the beginning. Um, like preservation is, is, is one thing in, in the future. But also on, on ecological, uh, because like all these metaverse will actually need uh, more and more servers in the in you know in the cloud centers or something to run. Then I think that the I mean the change of name of Facebook was strategic. Was like three days after some uh, someone released some uh, like inside information that uh, like the stocks were going down, whatever. So, like it was very strategic moment. Of course, everyone knows that the the Zuckerberg were actually uh, owning uh, Oculus, and and he was like employing a lot of like uh, game uh, developers and so on, trying to do this. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I think ecologically wise is a problem and also even devices is a problem because every, I mean, you, you know, uh, like these devices, um, they're not um, kind of like this, um, uh, like um, augmented reality and, and VR, they're not like a thought for like wearing gold the day. Like actually they're uh, even not uh, um, kind of recommended for young age, um, like because the, they can damage their their progress on their on their view. Means it's actually we are talking so much that we will jump all to the train in the wagon of the metaverse. But in reality, I mean, I'm I'm with Carlos what he was saying that this is like a, a long term thing because it's like I think there is so many gaps on the middle that looks like we are there, but really like there is a lot of things uh, going on. But anyway, I think it's really nice to see kind of this um that we 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 think about the, like possibilities and we we discover and and you can also now like you see we are in in kudan we are a multidisciplinary group we are not, not only people from computer science but we are also people from economics people from history computational linguists um historians means we we have many views and and, and maybe that's what we you saw diversity on, of questions right but thank you <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Yeah, I think this, uh, you know, ecological, uh, you know, you know, even, uh, you know, greener stuff is actually uh, is an important issue. That that's why uh, we think that there's also issue and it's also a good to, you know, not like the beginner internet, right? A beginner internet, we don't know what is going on because, you know, so there's a lot of issues was not discussed. For example, I, uh, my, great, my original background was a network on computer network right so we know that at the beginning we built the internet we didn't we forgot a lot of important issues for example security and privacy which are not built in the internet so the internet was not secure at the first beginning right everything you can just eavesdropping everything so it was that's why you got your windows update every i'm not using windows but you know windows update uh you've got uh, a lot of windows update because there's a lot of security things right but yeah, I think the, the real kind of more advanced version of metaverse we may at least wait for 10 or 20 years, maybe, you know, you really go into those very fancy, uh, like, you know, ubiquitous thing like the internet, right? It will, it, it will take some time, but I think it's beginning now. We are, from the internet, we understand, or from the Facebook story, and we understand much better the things are going to happen. So then actually, we can actually have a better design if we have, you know, people got more discussion and they got more issues and all these issues actually can be uh, integrated into design at the first beginning. I think it would definitely uh, help. And that's not only about, uh, you know, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, humanity or social or ecological things. There are also technical things that uh, there's a lot of uh, technical issues. For example, you will talk about virtual reality, right? Virtual reality, uh, actually it consume a lot of uh, bandwidth, like uh, just a uh, technological point of view. So they say that, uh, uh, i just give you an example from the technical point of view that uh, how, why these are very technically challenging, okay? So they say that we human, we have our eyesight, which uh, they say normal eyesight is 2020, right? So, uh, so basically you want to, so the headset you put on your eyes, you know, it's so close to your eye, that you need extremely high resolution, okay? So what it means, it means that you need, if you want to have normal size for seeing the uh, the uh, video quality close to your eyes, like a headset, like Oculus, uh, you need like uh, 3,600 pixel per one degree area, okay? So you need very, very fine, otherwise you, you're really bad. You see a lot of blur thing. Today you buy Oculus, you, you pay the 360 degree video, you see things blur because your eye focus is on a specific region, which is less than 60 degree by, uh, six, uh, by 60 degree, okay? So it's very focused. So you need high resolution. So which means that if you achieve this, you need 16K of resolution. So now you have talking about 4K, 8K, you've got an 8K TV now, but in order to have a very uh, good experience, you need 18K of video. So the 18K of video actually is going to take about 300 megabit per second if you want to stream this video down, you know. And you think about, you know, everybody wearing this headset and all these videos, 300, 300 megabit per second, streaming to millions of users, right? How much this traffic is going to create on the internet? 
and uh, and how much content you know how much electricity is going to uh, consume right so these are some technical terms that we need to 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 solve as well yeah and, and imagine that in in this big image then you want to do some ai then then the machine just like start on fire already exactly and, and actually not even are doing ai if you to do decoding you decode the 16k is already uh, very hard you know you need uh multiple gpu to do 16 uh, decoding right so there's a lot of uh things that uh which are hidden somewhere and, and the technically challenged that was actually good for computer scientists because then we have we have jobs otherwise <laughs> so i i would like to to um, also emphasize another question that uh marge has raised which is ecology right like the the, the ecological impact of this um do we really need that like so the question is like do we really end up want to end up like at the you know the trailer of uh, ready player one like in a in a in a real wasteland where all the energy that is produced goes into the headsets of people who sit in shags eating soil and green uh, and then playing some colorful computer game isn't isn't that colorfulness torture uh, if you don't if you cannot go out the door and like enjoy nature which runs on much less energy it seems like yeah yeah i think this uh, definitely uh I mean, definitely is uh, is one uh, this so uh, dystopian sort of uh, you know uh, version of this uh, metaverse, right? So there are actually uh, two two uh, two big noise about how the metaverse should look like. So the, mm -hmm. the you know we can see that the uh, Ready Player One, the uh, the uh, Mark Zuckerberg version is like you know, put the VR gas and uh, go into the virtual virtuality and you don't see the reality, right? So you just, you know, uh, eat and sleep and, you know, watching and leaving the virtual world, right? But then there's another uh, person, you know, by the Niantic, right? These, uh, the guy who created Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. uh, their version of Metaverse is, is uh, uh, augmented reality, you know? They, they, they don't want to go into the uh, virtuality. They want to go into the space, They're going to how to use this, uh, you know, virtual object to make you to do exercise, for example, that is, mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, they, they want to build a massive, you know, uh, uh, planet scale AR application that users can go outdoor to do maybe, you know, uh, you know, they, they, of course they may just be saying nicely, you know, the people use their app can achieve something more social, better interact with the people and, you know, doing more exercise and, you know, understand better about the world. So it's, uh, to to version of this right and then you can we can we cannot tell you know maybe both a person will will exist in the future right uh but you know but you know uh it's difficult to, to tell and but i think at least we can see that the company are pushing two directions not only to one direction that uh you live in the in the uh, dystopian world um, and then the second issue is that this is like the question I had personally before Mara was speaking. So um, it's a difficult question. So um, the, we, we had, we, we saw all this stuff regarding, you know, having some kind of twin version of the three dimensional world surrounding us, which we can measure. Yeah. Um, now, everyone in this Zoom room, like all the sort of 30, 40 people here have yeah. uh, a model about the real world that would not be uh, the same or mappable towards one three-dimensional space. So you cannot twin, you can twin our three-dimensional configuration, say, but you cannot twin the imaginations in the different minds of people. Um, and obviously, as you measure the world with different cameras, that may also be not be readily uh, allow, being allowed for to actually transform into some digital twin. So that means from the imaginations, of all the people, you would have to restrict towards a common ground that is then transmitted. And so the key issue about this is that this necessitates some form of convention, which not everybody may agree on. So mm -hmm. you actually sort of narrow the depiction of the real world, and you have something that is allowed and other things that are not allowed, which sounds a lot like thought police. So the question is, and this here, the alternative again is like what uh, what Indra Gibros sort of was referring to—a notion of the metaverse, 
that allows for addressable but different versions of reality. And you know, we can have the 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 the, the Facebook version and the Second Life version and the Pokemon version, and there can be fifty other versions, and there can be what I draw on a piece of paper, maybe my three-dimensional world, and that's all. That's it. So the question is. Um, I, I have the feeling there is a primacy coming back in of the three dimensional, which we have sort of overcome with the internet, right? Like you can you can play chess with somebody who's really far away. Before the internet, you had to visit me in order to play chess with me. And now we we have this we dream of this separate three dimensional space, which seems to be a restriction. So what is your take on that, or, or don't, don't you see that if there is one? three-dimensional digital twin of Earth? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think this digital twin, you know, uh, is this term actually uh, is not very good. I think, yeah, this, uh, because it may give people the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, I mean, this idea of something, you know, uh, that actually it, it have to be one copy, right? And it's just a twin. So basically, uh, the digital twin uh, itself, it can be just uh, it's just a model of the uh, the uh, you know the the uh, physical world, right? And it does not need to capture all the characters. You know, it does not need to keep. You know, it depends on the system that what kind of system they're using. It does not need to have an asset one to one mapping, but the twin it just need to keep the features or characters, which that the uh, that your system, your online system need to model the the this uh, this the this real world, right? Because of the uh, because all models actually are wrong. Uh, some of these models uh, can be useful, and this you can see this uh, twin, this your twin as uh, just a, a model of this. Uh, you know, in one aspect, it's just a model, right? But of course, it's not right, correct that we say that it's model. But because if we uh, from this concept, we're also going to do some kind of uh, interaction with the real world as well, right? The data fall in from the, uh, the 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 physical to the virtual, and then the virtual to the physical. But I think I may not answer your question uh, because <laughs> it's not it's difficult. It's a not easy question. So I get uh, I'd like Paul to try to say something first, and then I I may come up with uh, some more uh, more uh, response. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. This is a very difficult question. Uh, but I guess I have a similar question this after, afternoon. I talked to uh, my colleague uh, in my uh, institute. Um, and we, we talk about like, uh, we, we try to scan everything in the 3D world. But sometimes maybe we uh, now, uh, maybe we, we just focus on one applications. For example, Pokemon Go. And the Pokemon Go applications uh, just try to capture your, um, uh, your movement in a particular place or your geolocation uh, to be more specific. So the AR or VR applications uh, may capture the only the, the information necessary for that applications to be uh, uh, for, for their fundamental functions. They are not going to capture all the details. So uh, it, 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 this uh, actually try to protect our uh, user piracy. So, but what information we need to collect for these digital twins and what is the granularity and what is the time frame? Uh, because you know, if we capture every uh, moment in the 3D world, so maybe this will be very dangerous for the for these digital trends. So we need to consider the time frame, we need to consider the granularity. And based on this, we need to have some theory to know uh, or lay a framework to automatically do the governance of the digital trends and their uh, data or user privacy management. Mm. Yeah, I, I can yeah, see that. I, the, uh, yeah, I, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, actually oh, yeah. we, yes. Yes, go ahead, yeah. No, no, you go ahead, you go ahead. I, you you uh, haven't finished, sorry for interrupting. Uh, no, 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 
Yeah, you, actually, you, you, I we, we have a co-author just joined the seminar. Uh, I, I don't know if he's here or not. I'll be yeah. sure. Are you, are you here? <laughs> I, but I think it's, yeah, it's, it's fine because uh, I think we see that uh, Yannis have this posting the question that the end participant have to see the same uh, twin wall, right? So I think this actually is pretty much uh, against what we say before because we believe uh, about the personalization with yes. you know uh, the higher level of you know uh, immersive experience for the user is to be personalized. So actually, we don't uh, expect that the end participant may see the same thing about mm -hmm. uh, a, a, an object. But more advanced level is that the they may actually see different things, which is personalized to them. Of course, it's dangerous that you know, like Facebook may personalize uh, your interest and show you something which you uh, only uh, because they study about you, right? But then the level about you know uh, AI and personalization is about that. Maybe different people see different things that they may be uh, interested in different uh, stuff. Especially they talking about, for example, that you, you are wearing a, a AR gas rather than the VR gas, right? You wear an AR gas. This is place pretty small, okay? So you walk on the street, you see the same building, you see the building physically, and then it's going to present you the virtual information, okay? But this virtual information have to be personalized. Otherwise, you know, you're going to, what's to solve, right? You can be, uh, you walk on the street on, you have like uh, thousands of objects, digital objects floating on the street, right? So I have to just show the things that you, uh, you know, personalize interest to you. Otherwise it's not scalable. So there is a, um... Th that is true for our own cognition too, right? Like, so when you walk around real world, 80% um, of what you're seeing minimum comes out of your own brain, which in some sense it's personalized. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so that that means we can only see what we already know. Right. Now, this is interesting regarding this uh, preservation question. Because not only can we ask the question, you know, how can your experience of playing uh, the Game Boy or the C uh, Commodore C64 in my case um, be preserved or whatever or reenacted, but there is also the question of like how about hurtful memory effects? Like for example, um, we're all aware that um, fundamentalist right-wing fundamentalism is sort of something that is not mitigated. Um, or not disappearing uh, by itself from social media and uh, systems, computational systems that are making use of deep learning and stuff like that. Quite the contrary, it's actually amplified. So we have racist chatbots, uh, we have um, genocide in Myanmar driven by Facebook, um, right? And so, so this kind of stuff is there. I have to question like, how about that side of things where um, having myself taught in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a school at UT Dallas that where we had, you know, out of 1,000 students, 900 wanted to be game designers, uh, and at the end, 600, 650 studied game design, computer animation, and then you think, where do their sort of like inspirations for art come from? Obviously, they all come from the same sources, right? So part of it is sort of a kind of, um, you know, um, sort of, being seeded with certain things. And then, you know, basically people do versions of the Marvel universe or fan fiction on different manga characters and stuff like that. But then there is also sort of older stuff, uh, which um, sort of like is dependent on religions and cults and iconographies and also superstitions that people sort of carry along for a very long time. And there is a sort of heroism for things which may not, you know, where if, if this was real life, you would tell your kids, and it was like, maybe it's not so good a deal. And there you can basically live it out and nobody watches you. Uh, and right. So the key thing is how, how do we have a set of common concepts? What about the public in the metaverse? How about um, sort of things we don't do in public, right? People don't eat each other. People don't kill their neighbors because they don't like the nose and stuff like that. How is that stuff negotiated in the metaverse where everybody can be whatever they want? <laughs> Cats eat other animals, for example, right? Just yeah. Saying. yeah. 
Yeah, I think this actually, uh, this person, sorry, uh, this, you know, uh, yeah, I think you, you cover a couple of uh, very uh, important uh, issues. First, if somebody is, uh, is polarization stuff, right? That you, you can see that people uh, may get, you know, racist and get uh, even uh, worse behavior. Actually, it was, uh, I think, uh, just read, read this. Uh, so some of my students are actually working on polarization about uh, political, doing, uh, you know, uh, computational politics. So, uh, so we have been follow up this uh, study about, you know, polarization of the uh, politics stuff in the US as well. And one of the interesting work actually was by the, uh, just published like uh, last month or one month or two months ago, right? On this New York Times or something about, uh, they, they believe that, you know, if you, uh, communication is a one way to solve this polarization problem that you basically, so they did this experiment and asked people to follow, you know, if you are, you know, the Democrat, uh, and then they ask you, you know, to, 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 to see these posts of the, uh, you know, uh, Republican, right? And they thought, you know, understand better each other, you will actually get you uh, less polarized. But it seems that this experiment they done, it seems actually by seeing this pose of the opposite uh, person actually get you also even more uh, polarized. And the, it seems that the, uh, the, the uh, solution is that you should more, have more social contact rather than just following some people's, uh, because you know you are if you just see those uh, social media posts, you are not personalized the person, right? You are not seeing about this person that actually uh, that you have an even ha more more harmful uh, impact that you tell I tell you that you know you are, yeah you you don't you know because you have this bias because you don't understand the other what the people are thinking about right? Then um, you know you just follow on uh, social media actually it hurts so. I actually told my student, maybe why don't you do an experiment in the v VR space, okay? So because uh, in the virtual, in the VR environment now, now you are, you see each other, right? You can, because there's some research that, you know, with the avatar, you treat them more like a person rather than an entity with, with, the, with the different uh, public opinion, right? So I told him that, why don't you just uh, repeat the same experiment rather than just ask them to, uh, to uh, follow, to see in their discussion on social media. Why don't you just ask them to have a discussion on the uh, VR environment and you know, it, uh, what the research uh, about is uh, VR avatar may give you a per more personalized uh, experience is true, you know, then, you know, it would work better than the following the discussion on the social media, right? So this is uh, maybe, you know, interesting to use this uh, VR to do such a kind of experiment. And then the other, Point that you make is about this also personal about the the common concept about the metaverse or how people people common people think about metaverse. I think Carlos actually have a very good uh, experience about uh, about actually ask common people about what they think about uh, what is a privacy. You know, even privacy is not about metaverse, right? That privacy is uh, is related to our daily life is what we care, right? But then uh, he got the multiple uh, different kind of uh, definitions and with the different common, you know, with a, uh, a lot of common people. So maybe Carlos, you want to talk about, uh, share a little bit about your your your, your experience or about, uh, you know, the common concept of even about this, uh, your privacy uh, things, or oh, it's too complicated. And uh, no, all the questions are very challenging. They they are exciting, <laughs> I would say, but uh, not easy to answer. Uh, I don't know about the as. Yeah, one of the things like how can you? I mean, regarding my project with the privacy, is like we try to find an, the underlying common thing that uh, privacy is for people for late uh, late person for us for person without any background or any context about the internet or anything, what is privacy? And at the end, it was, uh, you can find some core elements like philosopher mentioned, but they, they are this targeting now in privacy towards like contextualization. So everything is based on the context. So we try to find a more common underground uh, round on this thing. But uh, regarding the metaverse, <laughs> well, it's, uh, uh, I was, uh, how can you like, uh, I mean, the, what, all these questions, I get the feeling goes towards the governance, how you govern the metaverse at the end, like, 
And it's such, I mean, many things are like difficult. Like there are some approaches I mentioned, they are democratic. I mean, basically you will have a copy at some point of the society in the real, in the, in the virtual world. So how can we address these days, this, uh, all these issues we have, for example, there are a good paper in a, like in a few years ago in the Kai conference, like talking about uh, uh, sexual harassment in virtual environments, in virtual reality, sadly. So how they address uh, this, uh, how they address these concerns and how they deal with these people they are committing the sexual harassment. So the idea is like they try to, uh, they have a democratic, democratic decision. So the people playing in the game, they were trying to, okay, either pinpoint them and that there are people involved to try to decide what is the best case, the best solution for this particular situation. But uh, also the researcher, like they are talking, is uh, unethical to get this work for free to people. So there, there are some works they are trying to do the, that the content, the me, the content, uh, how is it? Uh, the media manager or someone who is in charge of these situations. Uh, so in together with technology, you can try to not be reactive, act and something happen. For example, if it's a polarized decision or a comment, how can you like do the, I mean, not react after the that happened, but proactively check these things in the real world. So something we can do that we cannot do in the society. I mean, in the real environment without internet and everything is very difficult, but in the virtual world, you have this AI, these techniques that can make the decisions, but uh, uh, give some hints about the possibilities of a polarized comment or a, a misbehaved player, or someone is going to commit something weird, like eating someone in the virtual world. So you can have like this tracking with the new tech machine learning technologies, and then you will have to have a human behind. And the main the, the main research they are focusing there is has to be a human in the decision. There is a human factor in this kind of uh, decisions for banning a player in the metaverse, for example, or all these but, things. So, so it's very well known from Sandy Milgram's um, experiments, the prisoners' experiment, mm. that it's very easy to bring people to kill somebody who's not in the same room, even if they hear them shout. So. Yeah. What you're saying is that, you know, basically that's exactly the criticism you have in the drone program where, you know, there's a human in the loop, but somebody dies and that person may have zero relation to the person walking on the ground and may still be a kid. And so that I think is sort of something where I, I do think we, we should be very, very careful. Uh, also, the kind of key thing is where you say, oh, artificial intelligence can actually help us to sort of identify these kind of things. This is the other digital twin thing, which is, um, you know, sort of intelligence uh, services actually trying to take as many samples as possible as we live our lives on the internet. Uh, and then having a sort of digital twin world where you can predict, and this is actually going on, right? Like people actually do this. They model social behavior of mm -hmm. people based on the kind of sensing they actually do based on cell phone traffic, based on internet traffic and so on. And they're, is a very common criticism that actually my postdoc advisor made that argument um, on Friday in a talk at the Estonian Chamber of Commerce that any of the sampling you have is undersampling. So as you have a lot of measurements, what you may end up with is an overfitting of the real situation. And so you think you have like, you know, all the, everything that's needed to make a decision, but you actually may not have all that is needed to make a decision, then you make the decision. If, if it's a drone incident, the people die, but you can never check because you have based your decision on all the sensor data you have. So, so basically the people have never, have the, have never had the chance to actually defend themselves, it, which is only possible in the US case, obviously, if the people are not US citizens because there you have sort of, you know, obviously probable cause. And so, so that is a kind of really important thing where I think we should be super careful if we have these kind of extensions of laws. And there is something in the chat, uh, Abdallah Sham says, Barbados is giving out virtual visas for the metaverse version yeah, of sure, Barbados. Sure. I mean, it sounds like fun. Estonia does things like that too. You can have a bank account and you can uh, have sort of an e-residence in Estonia. And you can even yeah. open a company. That's the same shameless advertising we did before with like hiring. Like in Estonia, you can open a company and open a bank account, just saying. Um, so that is a really cool thing, right? 
Um, but it's not like that it is sort of virtual. This is real. I mean, it's a real bank account. You can meet, sell me a real product. You can somebody else sell a real product. You can buy real products. And so there it's definitely on the AR side and not on the, on the like, yes. you know, this is like completely virtual. And so that is, I think, a very important point that all of a sudden there is a necessity that a lot of people need to come together and actually make this decision because right now we're, you know, we're in a situation like Lawrence Lessig says, you know, code is law. I mean, all the stuff that has been designed, everything you have talked about establishes a novel reality that is law-like in some cases because you can push that button or not, right? It's just if the button's not there, you can't push it. So basically the law is a law against it. Well, in general, this may be in conflict with our agreements as a society, such as, for example, what we consider should be private. Like taking a frame every second is not something we want to do. Like if you look at computer vision experts who tried this out, they said like, actually you want to throw away minimum 70% of all rent because they're sort of sensitive. You have your kids running around uh, in your flat, you have uh, you're grading some students and basically, you know, in front of you, there's an Excel sheet <laughs> with your thoughts about like how students are. So that is not something you, you want to do. And so the question is, like my question regarding your paper is how would you, what, what, what is your reaction to that? Like, how do, how do we solve this really hard task of all of a sudden we need to talk with all strata and, and departments of society? Like, how do we store health data, for example, right? How do we uh, like like how, how would you solve that? Is that something where uh, is there a moment where you think this should be given to the voters or something like that, or is it just stuff that should be just done? Right, right. So uh, yeah, it seems that actually uh, we didn't have too much choice. Uh, the, you know, uh, I mean, uh, of course, you know. Uh, we would like the user to participate. I mean, the, the potential user to participate in the design of the metaverse as soon as, as early as possible, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, it's not like, uh, you know, maybe, you know, we, we did not so well for the like internet or where we were at the beginning, right? That we, there were no users. But then uh, now we have, uh, you know, people get more, uh, more concerned about different kinds of issues. And then, uh, and then, uh, you know, it's good to, uh, I, I think it would be like all technology, right? It's, it's very difficult to, uh, to prepare everything, to get everything ready and then, you know, build something uh, with uh, all consensus. I, I think it's, it's not, uh, it, it would not, you know, it's unlikely to happen like this, right? So there will be a lot of try and error and error and try and then, uh, and then input and uh, you know from the system. I mean, in, in like, like all these uh, different kind of uh, uh, system design. Uh, so you have always have some uh, some design, and then you make something, and then you get the feedback, and then you uh, improve, right? So there's always this cycle. But I think mm -hmm. this just to see that uh, probably you know as you say you know it's good idea to get even earlier to ask the common people what they think about actually what they want from this metaverse, right? So what kind of, what is their imagination about this, uh, this the, the, what they expect to have in the metaverse at the first beginning, which may help actually even the companies, right? That, you know, uh, like Facebook believe that the person in the, the future is like this, and then another company uh, like Pokemon Go Thing people right, and then maybe you know Nvidia they have their only verse, so you know they, they they have to uh, multiple. But the only verse is more for the at the moment it's more for the industry, and they know what the industry need for doing the learning a lot of simulation about their prototyping, right? So that mm -hmm. one is more specific. But yeah, we should get more, uh, you know, user to to get uh, engaged earlier. But I can yeah, Paul maybe you will have. Uh, you have something to say? Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, writing the part of the like ecosystem for the survey paper, and that and then I aware that uh, actually there are not very uh, many papers uh, address the ecosystem, 
but um, I I think there are two uh, like two strategic directions. Uh, the first one is just like uh, what Professor Pan Hui just mentioned, uh, and then uh, and yeah, we we need to ask more user, and maybe we need to create a simulated environment and get a particular group of user uh, to see what is their response. But uh, one issue is that uh, if we do the experiments in this way, maybe we will have some uh, overfitting, maybe the model, maybe the setting uh, that lead to a particular results we want uh, because uh, we are running, we are doing this research and sponsored by some people. But uh, that, is, that may not be uh, the optimum case. So what is the optimum case? Maybe we really need to run the metaverse uh, and let the user in the wire. That means uh, they don't have, they, they are the real user in the metaverse. And then we need to do a long-term observation to see what happened there. And the second strategic direction is uh, we need to look back to what we have uh, in the existing cyberspace and like uh, our social media, our internet uh, to address a lot of issues like racist, uh, like the uh, cyber bullying uh, and et cetera. Yeah, so yeah. And I think uh, actually we, when I am doing the uh, final editing of this uh, ecosystem part, I think the next uh, very good opportunities is to have a review of our cyberspace and that can strengthen the ecosystem part. Maybe this will be the all ones we need to know uh, about the metaverse, uh, the, the second. Yeah, so uh, if, if we have like, uh, so uh, actually we, we appreciate all the opinions we have tonight. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, not tonight, today. Okay. Yeah. For them, it's today. <laughs> For us, it's tonight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so we have a lot of opinions, like uh, about the humanity, how to make the law, and how to make the ecos, uh, the economy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think there are lots of opportunity to have another survey to like uh, <laughs> to have such a issues. And our, our, uh, yeah, so actually it's an advertise, advertisement time. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, we, we, we like we have the domains, but in the virtual reality, extended reality, actually we can do more uh, and explore what, what should we do for the future cyberspace yeah. of the metaverse. Mm. Nice. We, yeah, I thank you very much for everything you've already done. So there's four more minutes to go. There's one question. So um, mm. um, uh, Abhishek, yeah. please yeah. please speak up. Uh, yes. so actually, I, I think Abhishek is our our student. I think the question maybe he want to ask you questions. Okay. Uh, there, go yeah. Ahead. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to ask a question, but I just want to jump in because I heard the discussion was going on the ecosystem actually. So I just want to add like. A, they in the music space, like since the year of 2020, the film festival and the music concert, they were the most severely impacted by this coronavirus pandemic. So they, there has been a lot of serious push for the VR space metaverse sort of ad adoption, organizing this film festival, like in the VR space. And there is this company, Patch XR, they released a musical instrument for virtual reality. You can call it a metaverse and uh, and within six months they, uh, in the summer of 2020 they organized a, a, a hackathon and they invited all the musicians content designer and within six months uh, they have received application from 3000 artists so i would say uh, the ecosystem is definitely growing actually in the music space so Thank you very much. Uh, I, I actually, uh, in an interview this week, I said like very strongly, what would be my uh, vision for the future is to uh, come up with a positive utopia. And so we talked a little bit about the sort of restrictions and where we need to think more about the metaverse. And I'm really happy that you said this at the very end, because actually we're all here 
like in Kudan, we do cultural data analytics because we believe that this could help society. And uh, we, would not, we wanna come up with a positive notion, right? And so um, that is sort of something that is really important. Like what are these aspects? Uh, and obviously music, you know, obviously, you know, now for about um, 70 years where we, we hear the world in stereo before we could hear it mono from uh, lousy shellac cylinders um and 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 and, and lousy records now there's maybe a point where we want to hear recorded music as uh, spacious as we would hear it when we walk you know uh, through an apartment where there's a bunch of musicians playing so that is a really really interesting thing i think and so that applies to many 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 areas and uh, so I think it's a very cool kind of um, end note to this to this discussion. So I would love to have the discussion go on uh, in the in the future. And um, so there have been people from our side. Um, there have also been people um, who will have a metaverse discussion, which I know of uh, who won't who have not spoken yet. But now we know you're there and we know your opinions and vice versa. You know a little bit like what we are thinking and so uh, thank you very much for this really cool two hours thank you very much oh thank you yeah very, very yeah with yeah uh, very thank you discussion. yeah and a uh, lot of input and a lot of uh, maybe uh you know things to think about and to uh, strength so uh, thank you for the uh, very uh, you know excellent discussion tonight to today today for you yeah <laughs> yes thank you very much cool thank, thank you. you thank Bye -bye. you bye-bye